Right, we're going to do a little bit of a commentary for this third set between Finn Trimble and Matt Nation. This is the first round, semi-final of the plate round, sorry, for the Squash Gym PSA Open. Uh, I'm joined by Rod Bannister here, joined by Tim Wachilisi. Tim, um, you've just sort of joined us recently. Yeah, yeah. And how's it, how's it looking so far? How's it looking so far, this match, mate? Yeah, this is, this is an interesting one. So, I know they played a couple of weeks ago at the... Uh, Waikato versus what is it? The teams? Mate, there, there is a district outside of Waikato, mate. It's called Central. Central. Yeah, Waikato yeah. Thanks, mate. Central. I thought so I thought, I thought the Jaffers were bad. That's all right, mate. <laughs> uh, team of five for both um, squads there, and I think they met, and I think Finn took that one. I think it was in four. So I'm expecting a decent battle here. I'm not expecting a three love. But it's looking that way, isn't it, Rod? Yeah, 11-5, 11-5, mate. Um, look, it, we, we've talked about it a little bit, eh? particularly with John just earlier. And, you know, again, Matt, really, obviously you played Matt. So firstly, what I'm interested in before we go into that point, mate, sort of what's your, what's your sort of one-minute review on, on Matt Nation as a, as a, as a you know, a pretty tidy A1, right? You had a hit against him last night. Yeah, yeah. So we had a really tough first game. I think I got that one 12-10. I noticed he has... Um, some decent lines. Well, it's a, it's a good straight. What do you balls. mean by lines, mate? Um, just good straight ball. So he doesn't cross court as often as a lot of you know your local A1 players do. So he he takes the space in the middle and just has that hard low straight kill. So you might see it, but I found that quite challenging, especially in that first game, getting used to because a lot of people just cross court. You know. So is fight. that the first time you've uh, is that the first time you've had a hit against Matt competitively? Yeah, that's the, that's the first time I've ever played him. Yeah. Competitively, training wise, I've never been on court with them. So, so when you're playing a player, look, look for, for for anyone that's sort of ha having a listen or have a listen later. When you're playing a player for the first time, you know what what are you sort of looking at? I mean, as far as a warm up goes and hitting, and what are you looking for in a player? Or do you just sort of wait till it unfolds in the first set to you sort of work out some patterns? Ah, uh, no, of course I see what they do in the gym. So I saw he had a little, it was about a 20 minute bike before our match. Um, didn't stretch or anything like that, no mobility, so I was, he could have done it where I didn't see it, but, so I was guessing it was going to be quite slow in that first game, he actually started alright though, um, and I just kind of try and suss him out, especially in the warm up in the first few points, you know, I chuck some lobs up. So what do you mean, what do you mean suss him out, so what would you do from a, let's say the amateur player listening, what would you do in a warm up to sort of, sort of have a look at some of their, maybe their deficiencies, what could you do? Yeah, I just kind of do every single shot, so I give him a lift, see how he takes the volley, I do hard low kills to see how, how far he can bend down, see how warm he is. So those are my two go-tos, just to, just to really suss out a player. And um, once I think I've got a wee um, gauge on how they're, how they're moving and how they're taking the ball, then, then yeah, that's enough for me really. 
Awesome. So two nil at the moment in this in this match, first round or semi final of the plate. These two boys um, got beaten last night. Matt obviously played you, Tim, and um, and Finn backed up against the mighty Zach Miller. Um, I think they played. I think they played prob probably the probably the match up for the first round in the PSA, right? Yeah. Based on their who knows is going to win on the night I believe a couple of weeks ago Finn took out um, Zach in the, in the their club champs right yeah the local Lugden. club champs is it Lugden, Lugden. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah yeah it was uh, it was on five so it was a big match so we had a couple of juicy punts didn't we really yeah we a did a couple of lads were sort of sort of making calls yeah I... Joel Ascott was like respectfully my nana that couldn't remember who he called for <laughs> Who did you say actually? You said I, Zach, I, didn't you? I picked. I picked. Um, no, I picked Trimble. Oh, you picked Trimble. Yeah, but oh. then Joel called Trimble, so I'm taking Zach. Oh, okay. so you're yeah, taking the win. Yeah, you're taking the win. So I got yeah. the Coke Zero. Sweet, sweet. Coke Zero. Has that been, Big paid, has for that me? been paid for you? No, or? not yet. No, not yet. It's typical Ascot, isn't yeah. it? Really? Yeah. Is that typical? <laughs> it's typical. Is it? Yeah. It's typical. Well, he's part Aussie, right? Yeah, exactly. He well, did yeah, the Australian Harker, mate. He just disappeared, right? Yeah, typical Ascot. So that's that straight lines I was talking about. Yeah, and it's interesting, that straight line he played there, people think of length as being conventional length to back wall, right? Yeah. But there's all types of length, right, Tim? So yeah. so Matt chopped that in nicely, didn't he? So yeah, that was just was a good. bit of a variation on length. It's actually interesting what you're saying. Matt doesn't go off his lines when he's hitting straight a lot, does he? he so I suppose if you were analysing him as a player or a coach, you'd sort of work out that you could sort of get to the tee and look at hitting, sort of cutting off his loose ones? Yeah, cutting off his loose yeah. ones, yeah. So especially when he's behind you, he doesn't have as much threat. But when he's right, he front, won't cross-court again. He just cross-court for yeah, the first nah. time and that's uh, it just got chopped. Yeah, you got to be careful with Finn. Now, Finn, now Finn, mate, what's, what's mate, you guys obviously know him quite well. He's uh, yeah. a little a little bit of history about Finn. I think John was saying he's one of our top juniors a few years back. Then yeah, he went yeah. to the States. Then he went to the States for college. Then he finished... Finished his first year there at um, Dickinson College. Oh right, that's where yep. Courtney Trail is at yes, the moment. Where Courtney and Trail is, yep. Young fella from Kobe, from I believe from Wellington. Yep. Young Kobe. Yeah. Yep. So how, how do the Kiwis get in there, mate? What have we got a contact that's there? That's a good or? question. I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. Because I know Courtney Trail, um, our local Central girl, is based there now, and she was supposed to get back there in January, but she was just saying last night it looks like. With what's going on in the states, uh, she might be back in August, if that. So, oh, wow. falling apart a bit in the states, right, with the yeah. college squash? Yeah, I heard it's been cancelled until next August. Right, that's the, right. That's yeah, that's everything I've heard about that. So Finn's strengths, mate. I mean, I, I mean, I can I, I can see what he, his few patterns, what he likes here. But what what would you call on Finn's strengths in his game? Um, Finn's got probably his backhand side. It's definitely his strength, especially in the middle middle of the court. Good to have you with us, Harris. Good to see you commenting and watching the match. From the US, mate. Harris, whereabouts in the US are you from? Crikey, what time's it in the US? I think it'll be past my bedtime. <laughs> oh, so we've got Matt Nation up 9-8 in this one. Nine, so, eight. mate, yeah, big rally, was, big I rally. I think this was going to be... Big rally, yeah, you, this good is, call. This is the games I was thinking. Oh, Finn likes taking it up there, doesn't oh, he? Oh, here's possible. a go, here's a go. Oh, what now? Tools, what? Oh, but a straight line again, isn't yeah, it? Interesting. A good straight line, yeah. Yeah, big nice rally for Matt. Oh, that's not a bad nudge. Now what? Now hold, maybe a hold. So he not loves bad. his straight ones. It's, it's good. Yeah, right, mate. It's interesting. Wish I knew that when I was playing him. <laughs> Especially oh. at like nine eight. Oh, that's yeah. Oh, he's lifting well. How are the lungs now, Tim, for these boys? Oh, they'll this be, they'll rally. Be hurting, they'll, hey? be they'll be hurting. This is a big point. Oh! <laughs> like a true it's central player right off there. the frame for a winner. Outstanding. Matt goes to 10 8 in the third. Two love to Finn. Is that a bit of a master's trick going on there, Tim, do you think? I don't know. What do you think? Trimble up to the front, wipes a hand, the dirty dirty? Yeah, that's a. Uh... Is that's that a Waikato you know, trick? You know, lungs right, are hurting. really? Yeah. 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 Look well, at him. Look at it. Look, look, look at the racket you know. now. It's all coming out. Nation was ready to serve. 10 8 game ball. Oh, oh you call, Tim. Oh, ah, there you go. Stroke. So that's 2 1, folks. Um, Nation takes that one at 11 8. 2 1 to Finn Trimble. We'll be back in a minute.
so we're back live here now. Matt Nation just took that set. Matt Nation, a local boy working in Wellington in a contract at the moment, and young Finn Trimble, who's at uni, I believe, Tim and in, uh, in the Waikato. Yeah, I think he just finished his degree this year. What did he do? What what degree did he do, uh, mate? Bachelor of Business. Good boy. Majoring in I don't know. All right, yeah. majoring in something. Majoring in something. Is he um, going to hang around the Waikato, mate, or what? Yeah, he said he just wow. sussed his flat um, last night, so he's going to hang around, do a bit of coaching next year. I believe he's your roomie, mate. A bit more. Yeah, he's my roommate, yeah. yeah. yeah but I, I, I believe, I believe I've him there last night. Little Duggan got his own room, yeah, just like he wanted, there, just so like he lucky, planned. Yeah, yeah, that was the plan all along. So you're reasonably impressed, mate, with the setup and in, in, at squash gymnast for, for the day you've sort of been here. You're sort of happy with how things are going. The club's looking all right, or yeah, yeah, no, the club's really looking after us. You know, they've been really good. It's been awesome. Is there any chance we can get your boys down here full time, or you never know? Money buys yeah, I what? Don't know. I think Waikato's okay. just too good, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hamilton's just too luxurious. <laughs> for that, I think. <laughs> Pick up. Was that three bounces or four? Know, it was either, it was <laughs> so Na Matty just doesn't put <laughs> his hand up though. Oh, that's terrible. Matt just doesn't put his hand up, mate. I've noticed he's lifting well. Yeah, Since maybe he's game. using his brains. Yeah. Right. Does he have a coach here? Uh, he sort of, mate, just typical Kiwi, right? Self-coached. Yeah. Yeah, self Played a bit of squash over the years and oh, you're three yards back too far for that one, Finn. Yeah. I think you got a bit excited there, Finn. Yeah, I think it's a three people shot, watching. You know. Three people <laughs> watching. Finn got a bit excited. He pulled so, it off at that end of that second, didn't he? Yeah, that well, hey, nice. hey. Did he have a look around behind him I after that? He did, yeah, didn't he? He had a look. He had a look. Oh, I mean, that's what I'm talking about. Well, I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually going to give Nation a little bit of a jibe after that because that's his only go-to. Oh, and he's, and, no, well, no, Finn, oh, and he's been yeah. done twice yeah, like a dinner. <laughs> yeah. Done like a dinner. Twice, mate. Oh, that's good depth. Oh, that's filth. So we were talking briefly between sets, mate. You're sort of calling this, oh, that's a great ball, really? I thought he got that. I thought he got that. Mate, you've got to ask. Or, you think he got that? Yeah, I, he might have got it right. Worth so you were talking anyway. between sets, really. That you'd expect you would expect Finn simply because he probably hits a few more balls than Maddie. You'd expect him to lift the pace in this one and sort yeah, of I lift the so. tempo. Yeah, I thought in that last game, oh, pulled out oh, the nearly, nearly. He um he actually dropped a bit, and Matt just managed to keep his level. And that's all it takes, like a slight drop, and you can let your opponent in. So I think if Finn um, lifts his level again. It's tight. Yeah, no, I think it's good he'll, he'll be too strong here. So 5-1, one, 2-1 one to Finn Trimble. It's a good start. Really good start by Finn. Really, pretty tough with 11 nowadays, isn't it, um, Tim? You're too young, mate, to go to back in the day when you, your dad and all of us played to nine and every we only could get a point off a serve. But pretty tough yeah. to come back from 5-1? Yeah, pretty tough. I don't think as tough as it was back in the day. You know, I wasn't around, though, so I wouldn't know. But, yeah. I think it's... Well, you are 12, mate, so we wouldn't expect <laughs> you to be around. <laughs> yeah, it's good nudge. Oh, that's good most. Yeah, okay, 3-5. Not bad by Nation. A bit of a roll of two. The shots now. Yeah. Not as much straight stuff. Moving the ball a bit more. Don't know oh, that's great. Oh, wow. That's a good length. 4-5. So he's come from 1-5 to 4-5. Yeah. Maybe it's not as hard as I said. Uh, no, it's interesting. You, you know, okay, team. Let's talk about it a little bit. You know what it's like when you you, you, you gas sometimes, right? That's that's five all now. You gassed, but somehow we're quite we're quite sort of insane squashes. We find some sort of second win somehow. Yeah, it's quite weird, isn't it? You, yeah. you know, you don't want to run for another ball, but when but the black ball comes going. in play, it's it's and then all of a sudden, you, for some way, somehow, you find a second win. Yeah, yeah, I d completely agree. Pardon? Okay. Yeah, you can be absolutely knackered. And you just keep going for that extra minute, and then you're back. It's quite interesting, it's isn't it? Yeah. And then see, and then all of a sudden, you, 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 again, for people that sort of don't or don't understand, is that your opponent oh, all of a sudden, your opponent good. all of a sudden hits a hits one into the into the tin like Finn did, and then you know you find a bit of juice again. Oh, that's a oh, great. So oh my good. goodness. Yeah, th I, I'm feeling this is absolutely critical in the context of it, right? Yeah, oh, that's, that's a great it. effort. That's a good rally from Sam. Right, that's five all six five. Look, mate, I must say I'm quite impressed with with Nations. <laughs> I, I really am. Firstly, with his tenacity, and secondly, with his his conditioning's all right, mate. This yes, is this is pretty gutsy. 
He's hanging on. Pretty gutsy, right? He's hanging on. I think um, out of the two, Finn probably had the harder match yesterday. But it was quite a short match. Good change, good change of angle by Matt. Brought across, oh, brought another cross court in from behind, so that's a different pattern. And lifting well. 6 5 to Matt Nation, he was down 5 1 in the set. Oh, that's a good boast by Finn. 6 all in the fourth. So we've got a few viewers joining us from overseas, which is great. Yeah, we Welcome, guys, from the UK, and I'll get back to. Who was it, mate? I'll get back to Harris, who was actually at Cam Pilly's club in the US. Cam Pilly, the Australian, who has the great shot by Matt, just chops it in on the forehand. Who uh, Cam Pilly has, I believe, it's the speed record or something for hitting a squash ball into his brother's back. Into his would brother's you do that back. for your brother? No, you I wouldn't would take not. one for the team. No, no, I would not. no. Nah. wouldn't take it for the team. Video, brother. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a volunteer to video. Shit, that's good length. That's good length. See all in the fourth. It's Finn's backhand side. So what's Finn's conditioning like, mate? Um. Over the last couple of months, it's been quite good. He's, um, I've seen him in the gym working quite hard. I've seen him on the watt bike. I wouldn't say he's um, oh. training full time, but he's definitely training. Oh, oh. oh. oh Matt did the fin trimble. That's great stuff. I'm really impressed with Matt. Showing a lot of heart, a lot of ticker. He's not going to go away quickly, Tim. No, he's not. Eight, seven. Did you call this? You actually yeah, called I, it, didn't you? I thought you? that he was going to come back. Yeah. He just seemed in most of the rallies, but couldn't quite get the edge. Oh, great shot. Righto, guys, I'll join you soon. I've got to head off and, and watch another match, so um, Tim, will, Tim will see you through it. Another good rally at the back end of this fourth set. That's oh, a great straight drop. Oh, it's tight work. That's tight work. That's a good rally from Finn there. Quite, quite crucial that one. Two more points away from victory. Let's see if he can make it happen. Oh, it's a good finish there. So that gives Finn two match balls against Matt. Good straight stuff here from Finn. Just trying to contain his opponent. Oh, great boast. Good get. Oh. Question is now can Matt take it to five? from it's made the error good to see some of you guys chatting on the comments here
That gives Matt his first game ball. Two errors from Finn. Two quite crucial errors. But Matt's hanging in there, he's doing well. Can he make the most of this first game ball? Good wee smile there from Matt. I think he thought Finn was going to volley that one. Another error from Finn there. Maybe it's a tired area, tired area, maybe it's a mental area. Not too sure. It's looking alright out there though, Finn. Not looking too tired. Oh, lucky bounce there. As you can see on that one, um, there's some interesting bounces in the back corners, kind of tend to just skid along that sidewall when you get a nice deep length. I think it's going to come out, but it doesn't quite, doesn't quite come out as it would in a traditional court. Nice, oh, good length there. He's made the error. Well, that's matched to Finn Trimble. 14 12 in the fourth. So there you have it, folks. The semi finals of the plate goes to Finn Trimble. Thanks for joining us.
Welcome everyone to this, our second match of the day. We've got Joel Arscott in the red. Um, Joel's a professional on the PSA Tour, currently ranked about 235. Uh, and his opponent today is Alan Bailey. Um, Alan's a good uh, local player who's uh, come into the draw to uh, make up um, a full draw, which is uh, very much appreciated. And he's got himself a nice little lead here, 4-3 up in the first game. Uh, as both players are just sort of getting settled. Alan played Luamba Chalisti, the top seed last night. They had a good fun match. Um, and Joel played Thursday night against Chris van der Sam and they had a tough four. With Chris prevailing in that one. So we should see the professional player um, having too much solidity um, in this match, but I guess we'll see how that pans out. Thanks uh, everyone for your comments earlier. Um, uh, that last match was a goodie, I think. Um, Matt Nation really put in a good performance after a so start. He was pretty sore after last night. Um, and uh, some pretty good rallies in there. So for a plate round and a satellite, it was it's pretty, good, pretty good viewing. Uh, we've had a couple of comments about the quality of the stream. It's a little tricky here with no position above the court to see the whole court, so we have to go down below. And we've got a little lot of flicker from the fluorescence. Um, but we're trying to do our best, and I think 60 frames, you can at least see the ball pinging around. I hope this uh, squash is appreciated by everyone around the world. I know not everyone can play at the moment. We're a little bit lucky. We normally have it pretty tough down this end of the world, sort of missing out on being so far away from everybody. So finally, we're a little bit lucky that um, uh, things are okay down here for now. And it's good to get these matches in after a truncated season. This is the last tournament of the year for these guys. 
we um, it's quite a late tournament. It's called the Summer Open, so we're right at the end of our normal squash season. Sometimes there'd be events in December. Um, normally fun double stuff. A lot of guys are jumping into doubles right now. And then we have two, three months off before the season kicks off again at the mid-end of February next year. We've got a reasonable program of PSA satellites and hopefully higher level events program for next year. But it's so uncertain with um, COVID, obviously. So Alan just making the area there under a little bit of pressure from Joel. Bit of doubt on that one. I personally thought it hit the tin. Um, Looks like we're playing lead. <laughs> oh, good Aussie boast there. One of Joel's favourite shots. Such an effective shot, but um, Joel's been using it for a while, and now Louis uh, copying him and um, bringing it into his game. Uh, certainly useful, useful tool to have in the kit bag. Well, this is the s only the second time I've seen Alan play, and I'm really impressed with. Um, his attitude and mindset when he's playing, he just seems to enjoy playing. He's not up there thinking, um, I'm playing a higher ranked player, I'm gonna get chopped, I just wanna get off. Um, he's just having fun and getting out there and giving it a go. Um, and he's constructing some good points. He's playing really well, so it's good to watch. Oh, that's a good shot. Oh, he's done it again. Yeah, nice attacks there from Mellon. Deserve that one. Let's tied it up. <laughs> yeah, nice squeeze there from Joel. Simple pattern, force the loose ball, take the volley drop in. This court is reasonably quick off the front, and um, but you'll see it does die a little bit in the back corners. Uh, it does reward a good length, so um, definitely worthwhile paying good length on this court. Let's hit the ten again. So Alan takes a short lead. The business end of this match, can he close this first game out? Shot. Well, Alan nicks that one, 11 8. Well done. Back shortly.
So we're kicking off game two, Alan serving. Just a bit laboured going in the front there. Coughs up a loose ball and uh, that's a stroke to Joel, one love. Pretty tough tournament here. Um, I know a lot of tournaments have multiple matches in in a day, but in this particular one, the guys have played latish yesterday evening, and they play twice today. So they're going to have three matches in 24 hours. Um, that's pretty tough. I'm glad I'm commentating. Let's put it that way. Three love to Joel. We're just seeing Joel raise the pace in this game, which is what he should do because uh, Alan's certainly feeling the effects of uh, two hard matches in a row. Oh, good finish. So he's out to a five love lead. He's starting to move Alan around really well and then anticipate and jump on the next ball to put it away quickly. Just got a comment here from Harris about hardboard doubles. Never played it, Harris, but everyone that I speak to that has raves about it. So I can understand why you're, um, I understand your comment really, really well. Certainly something I'll have to try if I ever get back to the States again. Well, I'm guessing that's a let judging by Joel's reaction. Nice simple straight lines from Joel, hunting the volley, um, hitting the straight kill, moving out on the round and then forcing the error. Good shot out again, takes a space, straight drop. Wouldn't work against a, a higher ranked player, they'd generally be on the shoulder, you'd need to do more with that ball, but it's working for him in, in this shot. So that's out to 8 love now.
Well, nine love down, Alan's shooting a little bit here. I wonder if Joel's going to serve out. Probably not, since he lost the first game. <laughs> there we go, 11 love. Back in a minute. One game all. So we're back, uh, first point to Joel, and he's started like he played the second game, being a lot more intense in his squash, and it's paying dividends. Nice shot there from Alan. Well, that earns a stroke, Rice smile from Alan. Hoping for a let, no doubt. Looked like a bit of a milk from Joel, to be fair. Might have been space in front, but safest uh, to play that. So Joel jumps out to a three love lead. And uh, Alan started shooting again as he it at the end of the second game. We've got a couple of juicy semi-finals of the main draw coming up this afternoon. Uh, 12 o'clock our time we've got Tim Wachalishi against Zach Miller and that's an absolute juicy match because those players have a history of very close very good matches in the last 12 months. So always keen to see that match for sure. And then, then 45 minutes after that, top seed Luwama Chilishi plays Chris Vandersam. Chris was um, highest ranking 150 in the world. Probably had some gas in the tank there, could have got a lot higher if he'd been able to stay in the game. And Luwamba currently 144 in the world. In our view, probably playing a little better than that, just lacking the opportunity to play tournaments and get his ranking up. Nice hole punch from Joel. Good pick up from Alan. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> 
Last one was Live and Love. Yeah. It's a good rally here. Um, Joel feeding out on there, but getting away with it. This court re rewards a good lob. Um, as I said earlier, it's slow in the back corners. Uh, Alan gets his first point for a wee while. 1 7. Patient rally here, and Joel just switches up that change of direction, volley boast, to nab the point after a, a pretty long exchange of shots. The quick drop there, drawing a short point and a quick winner, and it's out to 9-1. So we're in the middle of a club tournament here, there's 17 divisions, over 120 players playing uh, from PSA pros all the way down to juniors that have just picked up a racket. I'm not sure what the youngest, um, the age of the youngest is, I'll have to check that, but would certainly be well under 10. And it's great to see um, so many people playing and enjoying squash this time of the year. Oh. <laughs> yeah, nice finish from Joel. So that's the game. He takes a 2-1 lead, back shortly.
And we're back. Had a brief chat with Alan between games. It's a good lad, good sense of humour. We're relying on him for confirming the score because we're not entirely sure from back here. And he's an honest lad, so we had a bit of banter about uh, how that might work. Nice and tense rally there. And then uh, Joel having the um, squash IQ to play the volley boast and grab the point. So Alan's um, quite happy to use height and very pace, which is quite good for a player at his level. A lot of the guys will generally just whack the crap out of it, but um, he certainly has a lot of subtleties to his game, which is uh, good to see. Oh yeah, good hole punch from Joel. Bit of movement deception too there. Um, slow to the ball and then just accelerated as he got to the ball um, to increase the pace he could put on it. Nice to see. Oh! That is out. He's hit a few good lobs. Yeah, good shutout from Joel. Drew the loose ball, held his space and pounded it to the back. Oh, great post. Easy safety let. We've got a couple of New Zealand national reveries here this weekend. Um, really appreciate them taking the time out of their day. They don't get paid for this. They get some expense reimbursement. So um, just a quick thank you to Heather Finlay and Matey Galloway for making the trip down here, or up as the case may be, and giving their time to referee these matches. Can't tell if any of their, what their calls are like down here because we're blocked from um, hearing them explain or make the calls. But it's nice to have them here and uh, we appreciate it. Oh, good get, Joel. That's that lob working again. And he draws the error. So it gets the reward from putting the, uh, the mahi in, as we say, to get the ball at the front. So we're playing this tournament at the Palmerston North Squash Club, um, and that's a club that's had a lot of history. The 2008 World Juniors were played here. Um, Rami Ashour won that one. Uh, the individuals that is. I'm imagining Egypt won the teams. I'll, I'll double check that. Uh, and two years later in 2010, we had the World Women's Teams event here, um, which was a good competition. And um, actually, as a biased Kiwi, they did pretty well. Almost made the final at a very close semi against England from memory. So a lot of history at the club. Um, it's an eight-court complex. Uh, a few years ago they put in um, a bank of three courts with movable walls where doubles can be played. So next year 
next year the New Zealand doubles are going to be played down here in April. Uh, and that's an important event because it's going to be a selection tournament ultimately for the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham in 2022. Which sounds a long way away and I hope um, that goes ahead with no restrictions. But you've got to plan for these things well in advance. Um, just the way selections work, going to world champs, helping with seeding, that kind of thing. So Joel's uh, got a nice cushion here. He'll be looking to close this out very shortly. Oh, that's a good tight ball. I'll give a little shout out to um, Squash Stories. Um, they had a little article this morning about clingers and uh, that ball from Alan was an absolute clinger. Just stuck to the side wall. Another Aussie boast. Just catches uh, Alan's movement off guard. And that brings up, I believe, four match balls. Oh, nice drop. Oh, good counter. Good scrambling from Joel. Can he finish it? Oh, there we go. Well, in the end, uh, a good professional performance in the last three sets from six, yeah, um, from the higher ranked player. And uh, we'll just take a little break and then we'll be back for the semis. Hang around. There should be some two very, very good matches up shortly.
Right, welcome back to the PSA Squash Gym Summer Open. We've got the first semi-final taking place now. Just got underway between Zach Miller, I'm going to say, of Lugden Park and his teammate, colleague, uh, Timwa Chilisi of, L of Lugden Park. Um, and nice, nice, nice lineup too. I'm, it's Rod Bannister speaking. I'm being joined here by Joel Ascott, who's just come off court playing a local, a bit of local identity, Alan Bailey, in the semi final of the plate, which he got through reasonably comfortably. But um, let's talk first, uh, Joel, about the match last night when uh, we've had a chat about Tim earlier when he came on and commentated, but about Zach playing Finn last night. It's a bit of surprising for me. I thought that was going to go a bit longer, but. But Zach ended up grinding back in the fourth, mate. Yeah, I think he was like, what, 10-6 down. And Finn, you know, 10-6 up. And just being able to, I think he got six points in a row and closed it out 12-10, which is, um, it's strange. I mean, Zach's pretty uncharacteristic and unorthodox, uh, as you can see, um, fashion sense-wise and also squash-wise. Look, mate. Look, I, I, I look, the first thing I think of when I, when I look at Zach and and is that I think of Machu from Six Sixty, and he and he took it. You know, I gave him that. I gave him that bit of banter. I said, mate, you look like the lead singer of Six Sixty, and he's taking it. You would take that, though, wouldn't you? Yeah, definitely. So he's walking around with his guitar at the club. I think early trying to get a few autographs. Yeah. And that. Yeah. Is yeah. that Zach? Is that how Zach would put roll? Yeah. I think Zach. Um, he's a bit of a, a chameleon, almost. Squash wise um, and off court, definitely. A bit of a socialite. Yeah, but I'm Loves liking his look. I'm liking his look. That bandana and that no, beard. No, it's I well, he's, just, he's just a bit of, bit of a K band look. Yeah. A a no, I think it suits him. In the modern, it does suit him. I think it? he's just, he's a builder now, or he's done his building True, apprenticeship. Yeah, good so, um, yeah, I hear you. So you think so he's rocking look? that. And you can see yeah. that, yeah, you can see that in the tan as well. He's got these, um, you've got those tradey kind of tan lines. Yeah, so spending you're a lot of time in the sun at the moment. Mate, and you're talking about Tim's cars before to compare him with Alan Bailey, which is incredible, really, but good call. But, Zach, mate, mate, if you saw him down the street, I'm going to make yeah. your call. If you saw him down the street, would you say he's a bloody good squash player? Yeah. Again, it's, it's just that thing. You see it with, with at all levels of squash. Um, you know, different sizes, different frames. I mean, James Wilshop's the classic. James Wilshop's Sir Rav Gosal. You've seen them play each other, 6'4", 5'3", or 4'4". Whatever he is, that's no, probably a bit. That's probably a bit harsh. Five foot six, but but there is no body shape that's good for squash. And uh, Zach is another good example. Quite a of big that. unit, right? Yeah, big unit. Your rig. Get, Quite a big rig. He gets out of the corners gets round, pretty well, doesn't gets he? Round. Yep, gets he round right. thrashes his body. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. On yeah. and off the court. Lots of dives. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Lots of dives. Won't leave anything on the court too, will it? Oh, that's no, not no bad, chance. is it? That's great touch. That's not bad, Those is it? Oh, hands. look, he's, look, he's just showing us too the triple swing. Hey? Is that just an acknowledgement? I think of like, how good was that? A little bit of showboating. Yeah, yeah. How good was that? <laughs> so, what are you expecting in this match, mate? What, what are you? How will this unfold? Look, so I ask most of the lads when they come on and have a bit of banter during the commentary. Well, what are you expecting? Um, these guys have quite a few battles. I know that they're at the Waikato Open recently. Well, not recently, a few months ago. They had like an epic three-two. Um, and who got there's that? a lot of shots. Timur, I think, Tim got it? pinched it maybe 11, 9, 11, 8 wow. in the fifth, something like that. Um, so that, I, I mean, the average match time with these guys would probably be an hour, to be honest. Um, but you just never know which way it's going to go. I think Tim was only slightly getting the better of him recently. Um, I don't think Zach would be too fatigued after yesterday. It was only 3 1. So, I mean. Yeah, and he would have been pretty pleased to get out the door in 3 1, yeah. right? Pretty but, pleased with that. Bit in, the, bit in the tank. My prediction's got to be, got to be Tim with three one. It's a safe bet, I know, but I just feel as though he's. Is on, that a political a bit, like you're a fence sitter, or do you just think that's just based on form? I just think that's on form, really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just watching all their contests in the last year, I think that's the way they get, they're going at the moment. No. Not that Zach's playing any worse, but Tim was just on the, just improving, um, every tournament. So how will how will Tim's head be going into this? You know, will he be positive or will he just be focusing on his processes, mate? Will he just focus on his processes? Yeah. Or hard luck. Top again, of the tin, top this, of the tin. This time hard of luck. year, he's just trying to just trying to play a squash and keep the body ticking over. Just stay professional and play this last one out.
actually. You can already see some of the exchanges are pretty, yeah, um, look, look, pretty entertaining. What I'm noticing, what John, what, yeah, yeah, good call. So that's the difference I noticed. I watched, we talked about Maddie Nation earlier, right? Plays a great game. It's a really good straight line ball. Yep. But these boys are really chopping it around the angles in the court, aren't they? Front and back. Yeah, a lot of like kind of subtle, subtle holds going on. And they, I find with these guys, they both try and constantly hit that space in a different kind of way. They're not really worried about if it's straight or if it's traditional, they'll just try and hit that space as best they can. And they'll use, you know, whatever trickery they can to... Interesting, Zach just threw in the filthy boast in and, and threw his arms in the air and said, why did I do that? And then he did the old, why did I do that again? Yeah, two in a row. Uh, two in a row boast. Back-to-back -back boast. You usually see that in about degrading below, right? The filthy reverse. Yeah. A couple of reverses being thrown around this tournament. Are you saying it at the PSA level? Or I'm saying at the PSA level, yeah. Come on. Definitely. There was some dirty really? ones last night, yeah. Yeah. And how'd they go? Definitely some winners. Well, the clubby would love that, wouldn't I they? forget who it was, but... So that'd justify the club player. They're saying, see, it's a real shot. Oh, yeah, well, anyone can play it. Right? Oh, that's big call. Big call. Big call, really, from uh, from Joe Arscott saying that the reverse boast is, is like a normal shot. Or justification of it. I mean, come on, Mohammed Al Shabagi. He's the yeah, renowned for yeah, it. Yeah, but he, it's a, he brought it into the norm, I think. True. Okay. Um, Got to give credit oh, where credit's due. But what I find with Zach is he constantly, just from playing him, he constantly changes his tee position. So one minute he'll hunt the volley a lot, and then the next he'll just wait behind, and he's okay with that. Yeah, no need to do that. Wasn't that, really in the position to yeah, play that, that volley back there. That's where it can pay off, what I was just saying. Um, you, you feel like you have yeah, to create call. something. You feel like you have to force something in. You don't. And that was exactly that situation, was it? 10 thought he had to go in. He was back behind the tee. The volley wasn't really there. Oh, Zach. It's interesting. That what I like about this, though, Joel, the difference is, is that, like you just said before, too, is that doesn't care where the pillars he's still gonna he's still gonna unleash it isn't he yeah he's not just gonna put another one back yeah no he just commits he doesn't hold anything back yeah, he, he yeah. puts all all his cards on a table you know within that first four or five points he's, he's over to he's not afraid which makes for some pretty entertaining viewing but this is where these two have great contests you know tim loves a boast loves a Loves an angle, so if he gets sucked in, then it gets very interesting. So yeah, if he's seen a lot of head, similarities. Seen a lot of similarities in sort of style of play. I'm not saying technique, but yeah, I'd say the difference right now is just errors. I yeah. think Zach's yeah. made about five errors yeah. this set, and that's where you can't afford that. The mighty Graham Randolph, one of the one of the coaches who's been around the tracks for a while, mate. Here we doing his error detection analysis, on no doubt, mate. Error detection. Error detection analysis. Nice Tim. Yeah, it's good. Both getting on the ball early. Oh, really? Yeah. There we see it again. Just too many errors. He's right in that set, but... 11-6 for the first one to 10. We'll be back in 90 seconds.
Well, welcome back to the PSA Satellite Closed Tournament at Squash Gym Palmerston North in the North Island, New Zealand, and also doubling up as our summer open. So, really good few days so far unfolding in front of us here in Palmerston North, which is on the west coast of the North Island in New Zealand. Uh, we've got full draws, really doubles up as a as an end of season tournament for a lot of players, um, amateur and the pros that are playing. So we've just had a question, I'm um, Rod Bannister, I'm joined by Joel Arscott. We've just had a question, Joel, on our chat sort of area there. What's that question, mate, and what's the answer? Yeah, so questions come through. What level are these guys ranking-wise, etc.? cetera? Um, good question. I mean, you can get a mix of players at the satellite level, which this is, um, but these boys, both from New Zealand, sitting, I think, Zach's, yeah, Zach's ranking is 199. He's been around that 200 mark for a couple of years now. Tim was on, um, sort of on the rise. Sits around 330, I believe, at the moment, but 307, there you go. Um, yeah, so, but, you know, these guys, in saying that, Tim were, um, you know, beaten Zach consistently this year. So, I mean, you'd be the judge, really. I'd say both of them are top 200 level. And Joel, how old's, how old's Tim, mate? Yeah, Tim's 20, fresh 20, um, second year uni. Second year out of under-19s, juniors? Yep. 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 Second year PSA? Yeah, first year PSA first this year. First year PSA? For the, for the panda, as we call them. And Zach, and Zach obviously, um, Zach, 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 Zach played 20, year 26. Is he 26, 25? And Zach played, did a comm games for us last yep. time, did he, in, on the did, Gold Coast, 2018? That's a very good mention. Uh, was on the GC, yep. Commonwealth Games, yep. representative, and the Dubs. Was, I think it was mixed, wasn't he? Just mixed? Yeah, I think it was with, was it Amanda? With Amanda so. Landis yeah. Murphy, left-hander, who Amanda yep. got to the top 30 at, at one stage there, about yeah. mid-30s. So some good, good level squash on display, that's for sure. But any more questions, fire them through. Great to be back as well just quietly you know great that we can actually compete oh. at the moment look 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 Joel I'm, I, I'm like I saw we've all got networks mates contacts over the world and um, yeah. people that I talk to and the likes of the particularly in the likes of the UK and, and Australia obviously where I've been recently and you know very well that that circuit over there it's um mate they're just they're sort of I think we take it for granted Joel yeah, they're really sure. blown, I mean they're really blown away mate we can sit next to each other here have a chin wag you know, have a, have a meal together and these guys can just play, right? They can just simply play. Life is sort of normal, right? Yeah. We're very lucky being in uh, New Zealand, kind of secluded, and with the government we've had. We're very lucky. Um, but yeah, we've seen that in all other parts of the world. Very tough. Yeah, I... I, I Yeah, I think, I think, look, man, I don't think we realise as a nation, you know, not to go on, but how lucky we are, mate. It's, uh, we're just really getting on and getting on, right? And yeah. it just shows that you guys actually, um, the last week you've been, you know, sort of touring around the country doing some stuff and, and, and sort of a build up to your PSA as well. So you've had a great week as well, Joel, touring around? Yeah, it's been wicked. Um, although it is all bit domestic getting around seeing the local um, regions districts it's bloody wicked and um, obviously playing squash can't beat it so yeah very grateful to be able to, to do that again this year so interesting what's unfolding here it's sort of like I don't know if it's sort of a, a bit of a white flag in the second set or a bit of a submission but uh, team has gone out to a 2-8 lead so what's sort of unfolding in front of us mate any input from yourself yeah, it's a, uh, again, spoke about this a lot yesterday, but, um, but Zach is one of those players, again, very unorthodox, and he, and he I think, I think he does it on purpose, I think he does it on purpose, but he will often lose the first two sets even, and then all of a sudden turns it around and, um, very sporadic, I would say. So don't rest on your laurels no. if you're playing them. And Timber knows that laurels. well and right. well and true. Not to not to relax too much because. So that's second set done, eleven two. Thanks, Briggsy. Nicholas Briggs. Uh, I know you, mate, from yep, across across the Dodge. So uh, good to see you online, Briggsy. 
and uh, trust you well, mate. I see you're playing a few tournaments over in Aussie, so trust you well. stuck into his triathlons, that boy. Is he? Yep. But we'll be back for the third set very soon. 83 seconds. Welcome back guys, um, Team Y Chilisi versus Zach Miller in the semi-final of the Squash Gym Palmerston North Closed Men's Satellite. Two love to, to Zach Miller and not a bad start from, from Tim, sort of accidental a little bit but a complete roller. And um, what you call, what you call in this set? Joel, two love up, last one was about Look, 33 seconds. Again, if we're going off body language, you gotta go with the panda, the Tim White. But Chris. I just, I never ride off Zach. He's a very, very dangerous player. But look, Tim was already off to a good start here, so I think he can close this set out. <coughs> Excuse me. It's an, in it's an interesting one really, isn't it, Joel? You know from being a player, two love up. What a dangerous spot to be in sometimes. You know you're two up, you think it's game over. And then, and then you can sort of take the pedal off the middle a bit, and the third set can be a bit dangerous. But look, my call is here is that, yeah, I mean, from you know body language, um, energy from Tim, he just wants to get on there and get the business done. Yeah, very businesslike at the moment. So it's looking, looking in his favour. On a filthy reverse. A real quick four love uh, in the third set, two love to ten. Looking sharp, I must say, Joel. I mean, it's he, he's worked his way into this, but but looking really light on his feet, looking sharp, isn't he? I yeah. think he's hungry. I think he's hungry. Hungry is a good word for it. Off, yeah. off court. Hungry is a good word for it. Off court. Will he go court. for a feed after this, mate? Oh, he'll sorry. be he'll be sinking his teeth. Schmack. What is it? Schmack. Yeah. Schmack. He'll be. For the viewers, what's that again? What's a schmack? Sh schmack is what I call Tim Wood's version of a, sh of a snack because it just needs that extra syllable or so in it because that's how much food he eats. Um, so it's like it's like a, a, a large portion of, of of like Big Macs in in, in the states, which is massive. Yeah. yeah. So his his snack is just it's just a it's more than that. It's a meal. Okay. It's a meal. Okay. And what's his drink of choice? So outside of alcohol, I'm not going to talk about that. Yeah. What's his drink? What's his go-to? Oh. Like, was it? Is it like a Powerade or a Zero? Or we've what's all his been on a bit of a bit of a trend at the moment. But he loves. First of all, he loves a hot chocolate. Loves the man. The man not has a, mocha? a not a mocha. What, he, he loves a mocha. Okay, he loves coffee, a mocha, a hot chocolate, or a Pepsi Max. Well, he is quite a hot chocolate though, that's isn't got, he? That's got Tim written all over. He's a yeah. hot chocolate himself, really. Yeah. He's a well brutal said. man. Oh, I mean, look at that. 
Aye. He's a hot chocolate. No, he earns every single hot chocolate he gets, that's for sure. Does he? Good on him. How many varieties does he drop? Like about 10 different ones. Mm. Well, I think that's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, for his, for his birthday, I think he got about eight different types of like chocolate cordial for hot chocolates or something like that. And he had about eight bottles of them, every flavour under the sun, so uh, uh, sitting uh, on the kitchen table uh, for like months. Um, at this, at this, oh, at taxi, or oh, no, no engine. So at this stage of the match, it's like you're feeling pretty good if you're teaming, and Zach's just like, mate, just yeah, happy days. I think the wheels are... Oh, he's, he, he's, he's, he gave it to him. Wheels are falling off here a little bit. Wheels were head. Yeah, both. good point, both. 10-1. Nine match balls for the Panda. Let's close this one out. Book his place in the final. And there it is. So a professional performance from the Thames. So that's a conclusion, folks, of our first semi-final here in Palmerston North. Tim Chilesi versus Mark. Sorry, not Mark. That's his dad versus Zach Millam. Three love to Tim teammates and uh, reasonably convincing close out there in the third set. Coming up next is is brother of Louis Chilesi versus the mighty Chris van der Sam. So, Very juicy. Yeah, Wanganui's finest. Wanganui's, I'm, I'm going to make a big call. If you don't know where Wanganui is, folks, it's on the up. It's on the up. We'll see you soon, guys. Look forward to joining you soon.
Are you commentating? Anyway, it's 
Welcome back to the Squash Gym PSA Summer Open, second semi-final of the men's satellite between Chris van der Sam from, I'm going to claim him, I'm going to claim him Joe Ascot from a home club in Whanganui, currently working there as a commercial pilot, living the dream, just bought a house, and against Louis Chilesi, who has just come off the back of a great nationals, uh, just going down and to Evan Williams in five. Um, I'm actually looking forward to this, Joel. I saw Chris hit with you guys during the week he's hit a couple of times this week which is a bit unusual but um i'm calling louis on this obviously but but, but um i'm just looking forward to, to this matchup i think it'll be quite quite a good one yep um definitely a good matchup you know these guys played a lot of a lot of times in the past couple of years obviously being the same sponsor same squad um played a lot but no, definitely my prediction for this one's Louis three love all the way. Three love, mate. Yeah, definitely. I think the way he's playing, first of all, on his, on form. But I just think he uh, he's got the measure on um, on Chris recently a lot. Knows his game inside and out. Um, not that I don't want to see a contest. Definitely do. It won't be an easy three either way. As I said yesterday, you know, three love doesn't do it justice these days, especially at this level. It can be. 80 minutes for all we know, 60, 70 minutes for a three-setter. Chris loves a drop, doesn't he? Loves a straight shot. Yeah, loves a loves straight a straight. Um, straight counter. Loves a bit of a hole punch. You know, what I liked about that point there, the interesting thing with that point there, look, look at a lower level, what would have happened? The player would have looked up and, and asked for a let, wouldn't they? Yep. But see, that opportunity there, hitting into space there, Louis, and, and Chris made an effort for, for people watching. Chris made the effort to get out of the way, and Louis still had the op opportunity to play a ball anywhere on the court and did so. Yeah, and he's not looking for cheap ones, though. Yeah, good is, point. Isn't he? Yeah, yeah. nice. That's, that's yeah, good call, thing. mate. I think wrong shot option there. Again, see, again, we've seen oh, a re reversal within the how couple rallies. <laughs> so, going to be some good retrievers from these guys. they got very long levers on them. Yeah, massive levers, right? Yeah, huge. Massive um, levers. Very long, sh full stretch. Um, Chris they, loves a volley, across the middle. They, they both got huge reaches, yeah, yeah. and they play at a, 
a punishing kind of pace, you know, across the middle. I'm really looking forward to this for the simple fact that I think I just think Chris is up for this one. I'm not saying again he's going to get there, but I just think he's got a bit of B in of his bonnet. He's always like that though, Chris. He's isn't he? Feisty, he always, isn't he? He's always actually turns quite up. feisty, isn't he? He's um loves a bit of um what's the word? Loves a contest. Loves a contest, but he he get he likes to get underneath his um, opponent's skin. Does he like skin. a bit of banter? L loves a bit of banter. Loves a chat. Loves, loves a, a chat, chat on court. Well, mate, eh? But he's def I, he's, he's the veteran of this tournament, and he milks that like there's no tomorrow. And what I, what I, what I love about this too, what I actually really like about this, um, Joel, and you've been to our club obviously during the week again, but it's like, mate, there's about a dozen guys that have come over to watch Chris. I reckon that's cool, right? Yeah, like no. a dozen guys from the club in their, in their club shoots come over to watch Chris play. Yeah, he's been around a long time, oh. mate. And um, he's got a lot of respect from a lot of people. You know, he's not afraid to just put himself out Look, there. Mate, you know how up he earned, against these uh, young fellas, you how know. He earned immediate uh, respect at our club. He wore jandals with socks. Yeah. So he was, mate, he's immediately a local. I think we brought him a hoodie and a club shirt straight away. No, I think he fits straight in. Straight in. Fits you in perfectly so? at, at, at the Wanganui Squash Club, that's for sure. So um, hey, having right said up that, street. having said that, I believe you're also from a uh, from a smaller community, rural New Zealand, mate. A great a great little town too. Yeah, I've been around the bush to be honest. I've been living in Australia, living in New Zealand. So whereabouts in NZ, mate? Down south? Both my parents from Omaru. Omaru. So yeah. where exactly is that in the South Island? Uh, it's about three hours south of Christchurch. Yep. Um, so um, at the bottom. Oh, towards the bottom of the South Island, it's in um, North Otago, for people who don't know what that is, it's a, a southern district in the South Island of New Zealand. Oh, I mean, how, look, look Christopher's mate. also from there. I know, he's I believe Omaru, so. Yeah. So he sort of gave the guys a bit of a stare up at the bar when he was up there, obviously drinking an orange juice, <laughs> yeah. and he had a look at the boys and said, well mate, I'm, I'm from a rural town as well, so you know, I, I can mix it with you boys. Yeah, Immediate sure. respect. Yeah, you right. know. Immediate respect. Again, what you see is what you get. He's an absolute ledge and very so, easy to get along with. So, yeah, good fella, right? And um, so I suppose you, you made the call before. He is a vet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah respectfully. And, respectfully. But he, play, he plays at, on it? Does he play a, on it? Oh, for sure. So what do you mean he plays on it, mate, with the boys? How does well, he play on that? His chat on court, you know, he's veteran-like and he knows his way. Very crafty. And... Um, no, just, yeah, he's not afraid to get stuck in against us young boys. And he, Man, I'll tell you what, he knows the spot, fire. but he loves it. He absolutely loves it. Yeah, he's on fire, that's for sure. Look, he, he obviously knows he needs to get the first one or two. And look at him, mate. He's got, he's got, he's got a bit of a, got, got of a bit of a, not a swagger, because that's boys from Amaru don't have swaggers. This is true. No, they don't have swaggers. He's just, he's very businessman-like at the moment. Taking yeah. that ball nicely into the front backhand corner, changing a few angles. He doesn't really want to be doing that too much, changing direction too much. No, he's pretty street smart on the court. He mixes up his pace of his serve. He never... Loves a know, hold. Yeah, loves, loves a, hold, a hold. But he just, he knows his way around the court. You know, he's got those kind of traits that you don't see in a lot of 20, 21 year old pros. And that's, 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 that's that experience, shot. yeah. Yeah, it's a great shot. That's a good get. Real, oh, and couldn't back that one up. So a couple of uncharacteristic, for me, mistakes by young Louis. Uh, looks, body language is like he's not quite settled into it. Yet, even flat. though, even though, yeah, flat. even though he's not. Maybe it's because he slept for a long time this morning. This is true. Who do he love to kip? Do he like to kip? Oh man, he, he like can sleep? sleep, eh? Oh, the I'm guy can to sleep. Find out some things about so Louis. I've been flatting with Louis right. in the same room, unfortunately, right. yeah, for right. almost two years. Literally a room, right? Yeah, literally. And the guy, I mean, I can't sleep. I'm a terrible sleeper, but he. He's the polar opposite. He, you won't see him in the AM some days. Strictly PM. And that's another one. So that, that's that's another one. And Louis. So he's forced two in the last two points, hasn't he? Yeah, uncharacteristic. So is that pressure? Is that a combination of Chris putting the heat on, or is that is that a bit of everything? I think he knows Chris is playing well, and he's trying to. Interesting. He's trying to, you know, find a little bit of confidence in his game so he can can g up, sort of thing. Um, but I think right now he just needs to. Extend this first his game. Yeah, yeah, extend this first game. Yeah. Find your targets again. Um, but he, you know, Louis not one to panic on court. He's a very relaxed character. Yeah, and Chris, and said he Chris should have will, taken that straight. Chris will start to to force it, and he knows that he's got the got the measure. I recently. think that's a classic example there, mate. He could have just put another straight ball in and gone off the back of that, Chris. But he forced a boast, right? He just forced, and he knew it straight away. 
Oh, he's an opening. Yeah, good Loves lift. playing that straight drop. I mean, yeah, he, li he lives on it, right? Absolute he lives on textbook. it, right? <coughs> Tight work, though. It's good ball. Oh, it's good pick up. Yeah, it's not bad. And that's a good, 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 good one, two, three there from Not the a lot to get into the back wall in this rally. No. Both m massively difficult to get past, right? Both. Oh, yeah, hugely. I mean, they're really fighting for that T area, right? God, they're fighting for it. You don't want to get stuck in a volley battle with Chris, that's Look at sure. this. Oh, nice use of the old body. A bit of a gape there from Van der Sam. Yeah, wicked shot. Great shot. But change of angle, and that's what he's looking for. Well, he's done well here, mate. He's called back a couple of points, so he had his head down before, probably having a little bit of a think to sort of, what can we say, um, not refresh, but sort of to sort of recollect, and he sort of came back nicely here, 7-8 yeah, in the first set. Extended that last rally and just picked this punch a little bit smarter, which is the right thing to do when your yeah, it's good opponent's ball. playing well and you've had a bit of a slow start. Tried to unload there, wasn't quite there. Nice little gathering we've got here too. I think there's a bit of interest in this. Yeah, uh, decent crowd in. Obviously, Louis. Yeah, decent crowd. Well, you know, top seed, number one and four in New Zealand. You'd hope, hope there's a few faces watching. A few bodies in. Oh, then that's the difference here. Louis before was just trying to force that in. Yeah, now he's, now he's just actually picking nice combos. Really nice combos. <sighs> that's good ball. And we'll what's the Chris father's arm? I'll sit on that all day. Yeah, and he has a crack. Yeah, so a so, bit of a pattern unfolding now for Louis. Yeah. Okay. Eight each. I think uh, Joel, and I, I, obviously the courts at the Nationals and North Shore were really bouncy, mate. There was, there was no yep. doubt about it. But, but, I, but I think... I, I think this suits oh, Van der Sam with the, with the butt squeeze. Bit of space here, great shot. I, th I think Chris, this, this, these sort of conditions will suit Chris a bit better. I'm not saying it's cooler, mate, but. <coughs> and why is that? Why do you think that? Oh, I just, oh, he, know, he said the other day actually when he was sitting here, oh, well, particularly at his home club, but he just said it just wasn't sitting up as much as North Shore. Yep. So it's, he, you know, he likes the ball to not sit up that much. When he goes in, obviously he goes in well. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna disagree because I think uh, that this is gonna suit Louis these conditions. Oh, 100 percent. Louis's a grinder, um, but he's he's built his touch up a lot, and the longer this goes on, the better it's gonna be for for Louis. Because oh, I, I agree. I mean, he's got the measure in the fitness department, and Chris knows that, and those lunges are gonna slow up a lot over time. So Louis's quite happy to extend. <laughs> Just like you're seeing now, getting up on that ball and he's just punching it long. So nine eight in the first set, folks. Oh, that's a good great squeeze, squeeze. And the, we've got a fist pump. Yeah. Is that the normal fund of some? A bit of a fist pump? No. Oh, you don't see it often. You don't that's see for it sure. Often? But it, I think it was deserved after that point. Mate, that's a. I, I didn't think that was actually put in well enough, actually, with enough efficiency. But it was tight. Great squeeze. Yeah, and Louis having chin a bit jar. of a recollect. More of that ginger. He's got what? One game ball? Two game yeah, balls? One game ball. 10 8. Two game ball, sorry. 10 8. So he's done well. Yeah, he's, very I'd well. say squeezed is the right, many, right word for many. the set. And that's oh, it. wow. And that's a set to Vander. So I'm saying sorry, but didn't well, mean it. My prediction, mean it. prediction is out the window already. Yeah, you're fired. As Donald Trump would say, mate, you're fired. Back in 90.
Right, uh, we're back to the uh, PSA men's closed satellite second semi final. The first semi final saw Zach Miller play Tim Chilisi. That was a convincing uh, win to Chilisi in that regard. So he's gone through to the final. We've got the second semi final here now between the very own uh, Wanganui's very own Chris Van der Sam, where he is informed by a very good mate of mine back in the school days, Dean Lithgow, who's his boss at the Wanganui. Helicopter Academy where Chris is the instructor so he's set up in Whanganui based there living it loving it sorry and versus Louis Chilisi look look, mate I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say this is going to make any difference Joel but it's Louis just he's a bit off colour at the moment just a bit off colour I think flat is the best word yeah good call a little bit flat um, but look he's going to step up he's going to hunt the volley a bit more now and uh, he's going to put pace on the ball He's not one to roll over, that's for sure. Oh, so. 100%. And, and he, he, knows, he knows how to pick himself back up again. So this set should be um, quite different, in my view. Not to say Chris isn't playing well, though. He's, Mate, he's, he's, playing, playing, he's hitting his targets. Look, look this is... Um, I, just, I just thought when Chris... Look, flicked a text to him this morning just to test him, and, and Dean will be testament to this, his boss flicked him a text this morning to say how are you mate which I'm really asking him how was he after his work due because he had a work due last night he had some commitments yep. but he said he had a bit of a quiet one because he had to be at work at five o'clock this morning so I, I had a look at him when he turned up and he, he just looked like he had a bit of a bit between his eyes which, which is good which is good mate because we need a contest right we need a contest yeah no he, he always yeah. shows up there because he, lo he absolutely loves it he's an absolute battler you know, loves putting himself in the deep end loves a big five setter um, and it's always good to see him turn up like that, and you know something's good, something good is going to come of it. And he's got the green uh, unsquashable shirt on, and I haven't seen that one before. Yeah, not the most popular colour at the moment, to be honest. I think yeah, we're, we're all through yet. the green phase, but so it's you been boys more are mainly red and white. Been more of a red and white yep. lately, for yep. whatever reason. What's the local colour in the Nui? Is it the blue? Sorry, Joe, I missed that. I was drinking, sipping on my Coke. What was that, mate? Is the local colour blue in the Nui? I've got it on, mate. Yeah, you're it's at blue eyes. So you're looking it? at me and you just ask me the colour. Yeah, it is, mate. Black, blue, sort of white hoops, mate. Because it's in the, um, what, central well, look, district? Got... Central district is, is green, well. right? I'm quite, I'm quite impressed with it with a half Aussie, half Kiwi, knowing where the central districts in Wanganui is, mate. That's highly impressive. I'm pretty See Joel, pretty but he's got... Chris has got Wanganui's shoes on. Ah, uh, I see. see so I he is see. representing. Didn't think about the shoes. And they're not small shoes either. Oh, He's monstrous. absolutely huge yeah, flippers. On, flippers on both these boys. Good Think what? For 13 for Louis and possibly a 14 Stop it. For, for Chris. Um, which is an absolute joke. 13? I mean, did they make... So he could have been a basketballer. Well, both of them, right? Oh, yeah. Hey? Louis for sure. Hey. Louis for sure. He loves... Always wearing his NBA singlet in, in summer, yeah. for sure. So who's he support NBA wise, mate? Um, I think no one in particular. He's more of an individual kind of guy that you know loves a little bit of LeBron, loves a bit of Kyrie, those kind of guys. So he's not gonna he's not um, gonna bandwagon it and no, go to the Pelicans he's, he's this not year. He's not not the Pelicans, he's Steve not, Adams. He's, he's not much of a bandwagon guy. So three, two, one, nil to Van der Sam. Look, man, I'm, 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 I reckon if this unfolds much more like this, it's a massive game on. It's already game on, but it's a massive game on. Yeah, it'd be good, be good to see, you know. Um, we've got the final this afternoon, uh, or should I say, yeah, this, this evening. Um, so Louis, or well, both of oh, them really won't, won't be wanting to have too much of a good, oh, they're gonna have to, a battle. But they're going to have to. It's a battle already. You know, it's a quick turnaround. I frame it's a battle already, mate. Almost bowled him there, didn't he? Good counter work. See that movement wow. slowing down ever so slightly yeah, from Chris to the front. Oh, that's interesting. 
Yeah, it is, mate. It is, it is slowing down, but I'm going to give all the respect to Chris, mate. Not a full-time pro anymore. You know, not scared to work. And just showing some real gentility. I think he's got the old Canterbury rugby shorts on, it looks like, too. Mate, real provincial New Zealand look today. Yeah, yeah, he actually... He's like, rocking the Canterbury's. What do you, he, ro he walked in What's wearing, like, on? a Catman do kind of... What was that? Hunting T-shirt. Yeah, I think he had right. a hunt It was literally a hunting T-shirt. Mate, he's... He, He's a country boy at heart. Yeah, he loves it. We own him. Well, he just bought a house in Wanganui. No, we don't own him, but he bought a house, mate. He's living the dream. Look at him. Just pure it's guts It's coming his way as well, isn't it? It um, is, mate. So that's Look two at years from Louis. On his body language now, yeah. Chris throwing the ball around, taking a bit of time out. Louis looking flat. I'm not saying <laughs> Louis out. Louis looking flat. Oh, Chris, bit of chirp. Yeah, bit of chirp. Oh, yeah, look at yeah, him. Just you. a quiet yeah, bit of chirp. It. Just letting them know. He, eh? he loves letting them know. Loves a bit of um. Yeah, bit he loves better. loves like a quick serve. You know, when you're not looking, he loves that kind oh, of one. Oh really? Just filth. to, get, just to get in your head, yeah. Very um. What's the word? Craftsmanship, sportsmanship. Not really. Yeah, ju it's just a bit. Just yeah. But, uh, what, what, did, what did Steve Wall call it? The Australian can, but a mental mm. disintegration. There you go. It, he never called. Like he, nev he, he never call it sledging, Steve Wall. He said it's called mis mental disintegration. Mis Hey? Wow. We know it's sledging. What a champ. Yeah, oh, that's not a great ball. And, and we know Louis will keep going, and Chris has got to play exceptionally. But, but mate, he's going well. So far, so good, yeah. yeah so but far. You, you can see him now, look at that movement, it's slowing oh, up. It's not a bad nudge, though. See, I'm defending Chris here. You see, you I'm, doing, I'm putting defensive one up. You're talking up Louis, so let's go in the commentary box, too, mate. Yeah. It's a bit of banter. Well, my prediction's already wrong. I haven't asked for yeah, yours yet. Yeah, good call, good call. I'm just saying Van der Sam's going to get a set, so I'm on, I'm, mate. That's on the fence, come hey, on. It is right, it's soft. You guys like that call, it's soft. Good lift. Oh, really? Really? Tough to play that one. Three, five. Oh, what's the score, please, Riff? A double take? See, I told you. Yeah, uh, it's all, Very crafty, it's all unfolding. Yeah you got to love that. That's the old school stuff. It's good to see some of the modern players still do it. It keeps, it keeps us young boys on his toes. On our toes. Uh, cool to have in your team, though, Chris. Uh, oh, yeah, great, Chris great to, You know, it really is, mate, too. But, but cool to have, you know, like a, a guy like him that's played a little bit, you know. Oh, yeah, he's played He's played a world champs. He's been around North America. He knows his stuff. He's played in Ponte all around England. You know, he's been around the bush. So for the viewers, mate, where's Ponte? Yeah, Ponty. Um, I'm referring to Ponty Frack Squash Club, which is in England. And why, and, why um, is your appeal of going there? Yeah, mate? The, the appeal that if you don't know, if you haven't heard of Ponty, that's where the Will Shops are from, essentially. So Malcolm Will Shop, James Will Shop's Malcolm father. Wilshrop, yep. Yeah, um, does his coaching there. Louis actually been there as well. Yep. In the last, last year, year wasn't yeah. It? And um, I believe James is, a, is is one of your one of your brand players. Yes, also an on squash player. Yeah, athlete. it's a great shot. And now Louis puts his hands up going, well, come on. So there you go, he's bridged the gap back. 4-5. Five. 5 all. Top oh, there you go. Too short. You can, it's interesting. You, yeah, it's a great shot. It's interesting. You can tell when Chris is going to play a drop. But it's still it's still a great squeeze, isn't it? You know he's going to go in, but he takes it in so well and at a good pace, at a real yeah, good pace. Yeah, and you can get there and you can have all the time in the world. But he gets it to hug yeah, that side yeah. ball so well, doesn't he? But all the drops are going in Louis' favour right now. I, do, I also think that that Louis needs something like this, mate, because you know there's obviously Ev Ev Williams who did extortionately well to win nationals and congratulations to Evan. But but Louis needs these hits. You know, in a competitive environment, he, he needs a set or two to be taken off him. Yeah, I guess that's the challenge at the moment, obviously, with with limited travel. Um, so, but we're lucky that we have about four, five, six of us. So that all there are benefits of, and there are dis disadvantages, right? Yeah, we can all kind of still push each other domestically yeah. and still improve. Um, but yeah, yeah five block, points in a row block, for Chris, block, uh, against Chris, shall I say. Block. So again, I just think it was that physicality from a couple of those rallies has hurt Chris. Louis gets that back though. Oh, I Louis. thought he got that to be honest. Yeah, so did I. So you would have called that up obviously. That's yeah. half of the Australian side of you. Would have um, called that up. Yeah, it's, it's a curveball. Yeah, curveball. Good call. Cool. 
he forced it there. And yeah, interesting, isn't it? So, you know, he's, he's coming in and out a bit, you know, Louis is, in and out a bit. He's sort of got a good pattern, then he, then he puts a couple into the tin, and it's uh, back up to 7-8. You knew that was coming. That's not bad, though, from Chris. Oh, he set himself up again there. Massive point. Massive the point for Chris, Louis, really. Massive point for Chris. The, the number one trait for me that Louis has is he's just hard to beat. No. Oh, sure. you, can, you can have terrible technique and blah blah and blah but if you're hard to beat it's just such a good trait to have and for those that squash players out there they'll know what I'm saying and see Chris knows how vital might, yeah, he knows how vital this rally is you think you might have the measure on Louis but it just oh, absolutely. Keep, keeps coming and you can see him just hopping onto these balls here and Chris is lifting absolutely everything yeah it's good it's good he had to play that well he had to play that well. Oh, really enjoying this. Really enjoying it. Van der Sam showing some real G and G and D, some real guts and determination. Um, Louis obviously showing he's a full-time player, going about his work. Had to work really hard in these first two sets. Van der Sam's going to have to call on everything he needs actually to sort of get out of this I wouldn't call it a predicament but to sort of get out of this and he's lifting the ball obviously to get out of this sort of bit of a roll from Louis great drop yeah nice counter the big fella had to go really low there pick that ball up yeah it's, that's outstanding real quality stuff from Louis three, mat, three game ball sorry so Chris is no longer hunting that volley like he was at the start interesting yeah um, good call very easy to notice. Oh my, why would you... But what? Out comes the axe. It's got out comes the axe. Nothing to do with the it. middle of the tin. I might actually talk about them to him. Oh, actually. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll fix the tin. Chris Van der Sam's loving this, isn't he? Oh, fix he the tin. Multiple times fix in my match. Fix the tin. Yeah. Loves a 17-inch tin. Oh, and, and a bit of banter. A bit of banter. <sighs> Ooh, stayed in. Two game ball still to Louis. One love to Van der Sam. Okay, off the frame. He'll take it. That's a real good squeeze. It's alleys. That's all day alleys, though, for you boys. All day alleys. Wow. Wow. 9 10. One game ball. So you were saying, Joel, and again it swung. Yeah, Chris is hanging on for dear life. He is. And oh. Louis's given him that, though. He's given him that opportunity. I think Louis's going to close this one out now. Very tight. Great ball. Great pickup. And oh. that's. What was your call, sorry, Joel? That's closing himself out, mate. Yeah. I think his palms will be a bit sweaty. I don't think he's he's lost any control of this, but 10 all, this is massive. 10 all, what a dream. Yeah, just forcing it, isn't he? But he doesn't want to stop putting the ball in. That's that's a big thing. You want to keep putting that ball in, don't you? Oh, you, you get have, too, you've if got you get to. too passive, then. <laughs> wow. Oh. And they both knew it. Yeah. Wow. Open the gate. Shut the door. Open the gate. All right, they're coaching each other, they're talking to each other through it, mate, are they? Eh? Yeah, a bit of mind games, a bit of mind games. Hey, Louis saying, give us what you got. Chris is saying, I had that. One game ball, 11-10. Oh, that was up. What Louis did there, what Matt Nation didn't do early, Louis just put his hand up just in case. He needs that in the back pocket. It's a tight trot. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, nice. That was really, yeah, Louis, really, that was great. Like, real quality from both of them. Closing it out, 12 10 in the 12, end. 12 10. Good squash. Really good. Back in 87.
Yeah. Right, I've got to actually depart Rod Bannister here, but I'm just going to open up the third set, and and Joel will see you through to the conclusion. Possibly be brought, joined by Temwa. Temwa Chilisi is going to, he'll be very neutral because his brother's playing, obviously, but I've just got to make a, a shout out. Outstanding by Chris van der Sam. He's got a Wanganui Squash Club shirt on, so I think now he'll be mayor of the city or be given keys to the city. Sensational, Chris. All right, Tim's. Tim, I'm just going to sit in for me now. Big cheers to Rod for joining me in the commentary box. Always good to spin a yarn with him. But we're now joined by the brother of Luamba, Tim Wachalisi, just came off court with Zach Miller in the other semi-final, pinching out on three love. What's your thoughts on this match so far, Tim's? Um, well, I missed the first, uh, I was having a shower, but saw the end of the second, and it looked like Louis was starting to dominate the rallies a bit more um, than Chris, I felt, but making a few errors. Um, but right now, it's like it's changed, eh? This is we've got a match on our hands, I think. Yeah, what so are your we, thoughts, Joel? Well, we saw in that last set, um, you know, Louis forcing a few few balls, but he, he seemed to have a measure of Chris physically. You know, yeah. But Chris is also hitting the ball very well, so it was it was pretty did very well to pinch that last set um, and squeeze it in the end, like he did 12-10. But I'm interested to see in this set um, if Chris can make some inroads and keep hitting his targets through that, that pain that he's feeling physically. Uh, but, but for me, Lomba's just got to keep that intensity up, keep the, the pressure back on Chris. Yeah, to me, I don't think Chris... And is, hit his targets, eh? I don't think Chris is tired at the moment. I don't think he's broken him yet. I think it takes a good... No, he's not broken, minutes. but I think he's feeling it a lot more than Louis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Just seeing him hunting that volley in the first set like he was towards the end of that second it was a considerable difference yeah when Louis Louis just making a few too many unforced errors isn't he and yeah, when he's not sure. making errors and he's just placing the ball he's playing quite well and still taking it early which is good but he's I think he's just trying to let his arm go a little bit isn't he and um, for the viewers who just got off you just got off sorry um, how's the court playing uh, it's playing quite fast yeah. Um, it's quite dead in the back corners though still, so a nice hard low kill or a good deep length <coughs> is quite effective. Um, yeah. Even the front corners you can see there on that straight drop, it's quite a dead court. So, yeah, not playing extremely true. Ah. Yeah. So, so you got yeah. off. Conditions are, conditions got off are a three love against against Zach. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on that match? How did you play? Uh, I thought I played quite well. Yep. Stayed quite professional. Um, I think he's struggling a bit with a hamstring injury, so looked like he wasn't really moving too good to the front, and I think I took advantage of that quite well. So lucky to get off in three there because he's normally we normally have quite big battles. I'll say your yeah. average match time is probably like sixty minutes. About sixty minutes. Yeah. 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 But no, it's good to get off quick because, and it's good to see these guys having a battle as well. Actually, yeah, for sure. I've got, got the winner. Yeah, got on, it, yeah. For those who don't know, do you know what time the final is? Yeah, six p.m. Six p.m. Sharp. So tune in for that one. Tune in for that one. It'll be Timwa versus the winner of this match. Could be a possible another brothers final. Okay, Joel. So straight off the bat, what are your predictions for what for this match? So I have my prediction at the start. So this match was 3-1 or 3-love sorry um, in favour of Louis 3 love. that went out the window within the first set so. <laughs> yeah. but I still think it's going to be a Louis victory um, probably in four I, I, even though he's down uh, a decent amount in this set yeah he's got it coming back isn't he Louis? I just feel as though the physical pressure of it will eventually mount and be too great of a, a wall for Chris to climb um, but to be fair to Chris, man, he's not missing much, Yeah, eh? I don't know, He's eh? not missing much. I don't know. I mean, other than his unsquashable shirt and that, that Wanganui shirt, he's not missing anything else, is he? No, no. I quite like that um, unsquashable, uh, that Wanganui shirt he's wearing. 
It's quite nice on him. Fits yeah. well. Ooh, Ooh, local local now, shot. as Rod was saying. He's had but a great again, start here. Again, in this game. Again, yeah, good, very good start. Um, but he's not just not missing. Eh? Not, yeah, he's he's not he hasn't missing. hit the ten yet. No, he hasn't hit the ten. So it'll be interesting to see very if he does tough, hit the ten. How, very tough for uh, Louis to get points. Yeah. You see, you see, I said it before, but he, he's always trying to go for that quick serve. Um, <laughs> yeah, he loves, loves the quick a bit serve, of craftsmanship, eh? you know. A bit of gamesmanship. Oh, he's playing well, isn't he? Yeah, Louis forcing it though, isn't he? He's put, putting the ball on a platter for him. Eight two now. So he's got to try and make this game as, as tough as he can because he doesn't want Chris to, to run away with it too easily. I know it's no. saying that it's 8-2, but you've got to do something. Chris is doing really well to um, not hang in the back as well. I know he, his game is volleying, but so is Louis. And Louis has been taking the ball really early recently. So I'm surprised that um, Chris is actually managing to get, get out in front of him, which is really helping him. I don't know if you agree with that, but he's just he's not in the back, is he? Like, he's actually dominating quite a lot of these quite a lot of these rallies. Yeah, I just think Chris is using that front wall a bit smarter today. You know, he's he's varying his heights a fair bit. Yes, yeah, he's putting the, the ball in quite oh. smart. A little bit of a fortunate bounce, but a f fatigue in that movement from Chris is, as I've been saying. Yeah. He needs this one. He needs to close out this game. I, I think it's going to five, but I don't know who's going to win the fifth. And I also hope it's going to five. <laughs> this is true. So you're playing them later, you want them to put as much mileage yeah, in the legs as exactly, possible. Exactly. Another squeeze though, I feel that that is just such a strong out. point from Chris through this match. You know, I knew he was playing well the other day when I played him, um, but I think he stepped up a little bit even again in this match. Um, yeah, just a lot of squeezes, eh? A lot of, a lot of clinching of the wall with the racket for, for Louis. Yeah. He's putting the ball on, on Louis' racket there, though. But again, a good lift. Wow. That ball is really going in well for, for Chris today. 10-3 now. Seven game balls for him to get the 2 1 lead over Louis. And there we see another error coming off Louis' racket. So the quickest set we've had yet. Van der Sam leading two games to one. We'll be back very shortly.
All right, so we're back for this, the fourth set. If you're just joining us, this is the squash gym PSA satellite. We're out here in the west coast in New Zealand, Palmerston North. I am Joel Ascot. I am joined by Timo Chalisi. So that last set, Tim's very quick in favour of of Van Assam. Yeah. So if you were in Louis's corner, what would you have said? Coaching corner, what would you have said? Um, what would I have said? Probably would have said, um, well, Chris didn't make an error in that last set. So he just wasn't feeling the pressure enough. I think Louis just got to try and step up and stay in front as much as he can. Um, even if it does cost him a few errors, just to keep Chris in the back and keep the pressure on. Um, also, he needs to vary his height a bit more, I think. He's under pressure quite a lot in these rallies. And um, Chris has quite a tall wing wingspan, so a hard, low cross that's wide isn't actually that effective, you know? Those are probably the two key yeah, things. But I, I, other than that, there's not much you could have said, because you know, Chris didn't make an error, and he plays some pretty, pretty good I think squash. We've already seen Louis stepping up a bit more. He's off to a good start already to love. And that's really it, isn't it? It's, it's you don't want to get off court knowing that you had more in the tank physically. Yeah, that's the worst. So even that's if you're spraying it into the middle of the court, just go hundies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I also saw on that first point, you know, Chris made an error, so... Yeah, exactly. It's hard and to know I, if he might be resting the set. And, you know, yeah, again, at what point do you think, okay, tactical rest game? Yeah, this is... You know, because it's four love now, five love now. Yeah. Um, what, what do you think? I'm thinking you know, this is six, six, seven love. Do you think maybe okay, that's it? Or I think he knows that. I think he's decided for the set going on that it's a tactical rest. Yeah, you can already see. You, you can see he's just not just lifting he's everything not firing, right now. He's lifting, he's just resting, feeding Louis. But if he gets a sniff, then he'll go for it for sure. Yeah. Oh, there you go. I mean that's two, smack, maybe smack three errors, and then last game he had what none. Yeah. Probably, none, I think maybe maybe, maybe one. one so so five love now for Chris uh, for Louis. Sorry, the fifth is going to be very juicy. Yeah, so I can't say who's going to get it though. Classic kind of thing in squash, though, isn't it? You know, the momentum shifts. Point. Yeah, it does. It does. It's this is what we see on the mental side of squash. It's, <laughs> you see that that's the gamesmanship there from from Chris. Yeah. Right when Louis goes to serve it. That's when he wants to wipe his hand, isn't it? And you see Louis straight away. He's <laughs> Louis having a cheeky laugh. Louis's yeah. not having a bar of a day. <laughs> Thought it was. Neither his is point. Chris, though. Look at that. It's quite funny. Uh, he's just mil milking it just a touch. Wants that extra ten seconds, isn't he? Yeah. Extra few yeah. seconds. A few more breaths in, isn't it? Louis definitely looking more comfortable now, though. Oh, that's cheeky. Worth the wait. Yeah. For sure. Loves it. Good to see a smile and grin from both of them. Schlam Duncanhausen says John Duggan. Will Louis hit that neck? Here He's we go. Louis a sniff though, isn't he? So. Yeah, Louis just going to keep that pressure on. 6 1. Scoreboard pressure's on him. Yep. So, error's creeping in now for Vanessaan. The Kristoff. Didn't see any errors in the last set. And now, all of a sudden, the wheels are falling off in the fourth. Is this just a, a mental tactic, though, to play with Louis? Do you think? Or do you think he's Look, actually tired? I don't think so, to be honest, mate. I think, I think Chris is feeling it. Yeah. I think the lactic is hurting those quads, those long levers of, of his. And, um... Yeah, I think he's forcing it just a touch. Yeah. So we know he'll go boots and all in the fifth. Um, but the wheels are definitely coming off for now. I think the question is, you know, how well can he reset before this fifth? Yeah, yeah. It hasn't been the longest game, has it? Like no, the longest match. No, no, no. Oh. Some good ent entertaining rallies, but it's just, yeah. Oh, oh wow. 
So that's two slam dunks for him in this set, and that's his two points. Again, quick serve from Chris. Yeah. Loves it. I think Louis' best bet here is just to, oh, it's a great shot. Try and just make those rallies as long as possible, because yeah. fitness is definitely on his side. So absolute coin flip from the last set, isn't it? Um, yeah, it is. Last set was 11-3 in favour of Chris, and now polar opposite, 11-2, and there you have it. So stay tuned because I think anything could happen in this fifth toss a coin, but we'll be back in a in a short two. So we're back for the fifth and final. This is the squash gym Palmerston North New Zealand PSA satellite semi-final. Absolute mouthful. We've got Luamba in the white versus Chris in the blue now. Um, so what, Louis 144 in the world I believe. Chris as high as 150, not really on the PSA anymore. Um, but we're in the fifth set. What do we think is going to happen in this set, Thames? Um, I think this is a very good start from Louis. Other than that, unforced error. I think he just wants <laughs> to keep the rallies going. Yeah. As soon as I said that, but that was a good start from Louis. He just needs to keep the ball out of the tin. But straight away, you've seen a complete switch in um, Chris's body language, haven't you? you know, he's yeah, that clock. last set was, um, was a tactical very rest, it? favourable in the way of... Um, Louis, and it looked good for him coming into this fifth, but we know Chris is, he's got a sniff for sure, um, so he's going to go boots and all, not going to leave anything in the tank, and as soon as it's there he's going to go for it, that's for sure. Yeah, this is definitely this is definitely good from Louis though at the start of this fifth, making the rallies long, still managing to move Chris with his nice boasts. Yeah, he's crafting so. the ball around well at times, but just not consistent enough at the moment. I think if he keeps it out of the tin, he'll be fine. Um, but I think if he puts a few on the tin, then Chris will really fancy it. Wow. Ah, Tim. It's unlucky there. That's what I mean. Like Those, those tins are, are going to be costly for Louis because Chris will just feed off those. <laughs> Chris already going for the serve, eh? Absolutely loves a quick serve. himself up in that one, didn't he? Yeah. So we know the game time's not massive right now. What are we coming up on? About 15 minutes maybe? Um, do you think the longer it goes on, the more it favours Louis? Yeah, definitely. 
longer it goes on, the more it favours Louis. But only if he's up, up in front, you know, and he's putting the pressure on. Because Chris, sure. Chris can can last if he's just staying at the back and he's just gliding. Yeah, and he makes it physical quite, too with that reach he's got, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, and he's quite an efficient mover. Like, you know, he's a big lad, but he doesn't have... Like, his steps aren't that loud for the size of him. So yeah. he's a very efficient mover. And I think... No, he's working the ball around well in this to, match as well, isn't he? Um, yeah, he is. He's doing really well. So I think Louis needs to stay up on the volley like he is in this rally. Keep that pressure on. Get Chris stretching. Because if he does, then it could be very interesting. So this is a testing rally now for both yeah, see, boys. These are the types of rallies Louis wants. I thought I heard a bit of tin in that, to be honest. Yeah, I didn't see it. But this is very testing for the legs. Good counter I don't know work. How volley dropped that. Good hold punch. Does he ask for a bit? We'll test the refs here this call, won't it? Yeah, I think we got what, Matey Galloway in the hot, hot, seat? hot seat? Yeah, Matey, Matey's in the hot seat. Yeah, Louis's quite a fair player. I think he's kind of giving it to him as well. Yeah. What do you think about that call? Look, I don't think he thought Chris actually asked. Oh, okay. So that's what he's saying, saying no let and carried on. He must have called the score or something. Then Chris has stopped and said, oh, that's a great shot from no, I, I asked for a let. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't matter now because that point's over and done with, isn't it? <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good shot from those. So, three all. Not yeah, much I between at the moment. I think because Chris fell over as he was hitting the ball. It's yep. left. Yep. You know? No, for sure he could have got that shot here. Ah. Wow. So, a lot of errors have come from the racket of Louis in this match. There's another quick serve there from Chris. I think if he wins this, he's going to be very chuffed, isn't he? Christoph. Yeah. Wow. So Louis, um, you know, had a huge nationals in, in November. Still November, but had a huge nationals. Obviously making that final and losing out in a very close five set to Evan. Congrats to Evan. But you think he struggled after... He struggled after Nationals to kind of get up, which is understandable, isn't it? Yeah. Off, off that huge high. Yeah, for sure, off that huge high. He um, kind of cruised through that final, didn't he? Kind of chopped everyone yeah, he definitely, played. Yeah, definitely. And then there was a great final. Yeah, a lot of, lot of emotion going into Probably that. Probably some of the that's one for best squash I've seen for two New Zealanders here in New Zealand. Um, since Paul was here, yeah, you know, sure. for a while, so it was cool to watch that game. But it's been a weird season, is, is the point I'm getting at. Yeah, you know, the, this tournament's almost almost in December, yeah, which is quite, uh, late, eh? not quite unknown for us in in, in Kiwi Land. So it's good to see the matches like this still going on at this time of year, though. The boys turning up in it. Chris letting his arm go a little bit here. But yeah, no, see, another this is, this is the start that Louis wanted. Again, um, more testing rally. Squeeze, but that's a Louis wants these types of rallies, doesn't he? Yeah, he doesn't for sure. And I think it. that is eating into Chris's legs. He's obviously very well, at, uh, very good at hiding it. But it's definitely those are in favour of Luamba for sure. I mean, he's got a big stretch on him, Chris. But if you can get him in, into those positions. Pays dividends later on. Yeah. But I mean, it is the fifth, isn't it? Has he left it too late? That's the question. Yeah. I think he's really hitting his lines today, Chris, for sure. But that's what he doesn't want to do. He doesn't want to force it. And it's a good sign for Louis there. A very good sign. After a long testing rally, isn't yeah, it? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's backing up those rallies. Yeah. Uh, I think that's definitely it. Oh wow, lit. I would have given that a stroke every day of the week. DK would have given that a stroke. 
He did turn, but yeah. Chris is having good lines though in this match. Yeah, for sure. Especially on those straight drops, eh? Yeah, straight drops. They're like hugging the wall, aren't they? Oh, it's just enough width. Probably not the one to counter that. Oh, wow. This is a joke rally here. Louis needs this one. This is going to hurt. Oh, it's that straight drop. Just hugging the wall, eh? Chris is hurting here though, look at that yeah, movement. He is. Here we go. Oh wow. And this is just what Louis wants. He's just holding them, punching. Keeping Chris moving. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I think if ever there was a time for Louis to do a quick serve, now's the time. Yeah. That's a good rally from Louis. Chris is, uh, he's arguing about something, he's arguing about something. Very, it's that gamesmanship from Chris, isn't it? I don't know how he's managed, I don't know how he's managed to squeeze the 15 second rest in there, but he has. Yep. That's a good length there from Louis. 7-5. So I'm still it's holding on to yet, though, is it? still holding yet. on to Louis as as, as my um, predicted victor. But that fatigue is gonna really hurt Chris. Louis has gotta keep that ball out of the tin. Oh it's a great lift there. Off a good drop. There he is again, forcing it and, and opening up that gap for Louis. So now 8-5, was 5-all. One big rally, two errors. Yeah, Louis done well here to stay positive and stay in front, keep hitting the ball early. He went for it there, didn't he? Chris is still in this though. Great shot. Man, every angle is being used in this. In this. this is great Kelly. squash. Oh! oh! 9 5. There you go. So, this is the. It's that pressure we're talking about, that physical pressure. Keep it on, Chris. And, well, if you can't take the heat, get out, oh, the, yeah. get out of the oven, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Checked out, guys. <laughs> Here comes the chatter. Such a likeable character, Chris. So a bit of chatter again from the lads. But five game balls for Louis. Wow. There you go. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Good match. Some smiles at the end of that one. And 3 2, Luan Mitchellisi. So, we back around 5 o'clock, I believe, for the playoff matches. But stay tuned for that.